Hello everybody! Welcome to another episode of C++ Game Programming. And this time, I have a ton of awesome stuff to show you, so let's get straight into the video. To start off, I've scrapped my old idea of using OBJ file formats to store the game models in, because OBJ formats are pretty large, and if we open them with a text editor, we can see that it's storing decimals as plain characters instead of using the actual values that would be internally stored in a computer. So you probably already know this, but instead of storing the numbers like one, two, three, four, five, a computer is going to store them as a byte of data. They don't internally store characters with decimal points in them and stuff like that. So I decided to make a file format which takes advantage of this, called the DAT format. DAT basically stands for data. So let's take a look inside of this DAT file I have of the evergreen tree model. As you can see, the ASCII equivalent of this makes absolutely no sense, and it looks like it's garbage. But I promise you, this is the internal representation of it. And it works really well, and it's pretty fast, which is always a good thing. So if now we launch the game using the internal binary loader, as you can see, it only took 10 milliseconds, and that is pretty darn fast. So to convert OBJ files into this new binary format, I've decided to use a different OBJ loader, which uses position, vertex positions, and adds in additional information, like the vertex normals and textures at a later point, which makes things a lot faster. And it allows me to do something pretty awesome known as mesh simplification. So here's the modeling command line interface. It's a pretty fancy name, but this program isn't very fancy at all, as you can see. So I'm gonna run this on the deciduous tree model. And it tells me how many vertices, triangles, and edges there are. Mesh simplification is a way to make a 3D model low resolution by taking away some detail from it. So for example, you could do this in a variety of ways. Like you could take away whole planar triangles, or you could remove the smallest edge and do things of that nature. So the way I've gone about it is by doing a thing called edge collapsing. Edge collapsing is where the program finds all the smallest edges in that model. And for each of these edges, it merges the two vertices at, their, at the average of their coordinates, if that makes any sense. So I'll put a diagram on screen that'll explain it far better than I can. So after removing 2,000 of these edges, this is the new vertex data. And the reason it removed a couple more than 2,000 is because some of the edges became connected to invalid vertices. So I had to do away with those. The mesh simplification. This is the deciduous tree model that we simplified. And this is the most high resolution version of it without any detail removed. And this is the same model, except with 1,000 of those vertices removed. I mean, 1,000 edges removed. And this is it with 2,000 edges removed. By the way, the reason that it has some really sharp edges is because I made a small mistake in calculating the vertex normals. But after I get around to fixing that, things should look a lot better. In practice, you might be wondering, why would I ever want to take detail away from mesh? Because it just makes it look really horrible, as you saw from this tree. But if we back away from it, from back here, it doesn't look that bad at all. And this leads us to an optimization trick called level of detail rendering. It's where if a model is far away from you, then you render it with less detail. And this saves rendering time. Another thing that I programmed in was support for more dynamic light sources. So now I can have more than one light, and I can control all of its properties. 
using these uniform variables. So the way this works is I now have a for loop surrounding the actual lighting calculations. And this means that I can do it as many or as few times that I need to. And as inputs, the shader receives light colors, attenuation values, brightnesses, and the number of lights in the scene. So in game, this is what that makes the scene look like. Try to save the best feature for last. And now I've added support for none other than frame buffers. A frame buffer in OpenGL is an off-screen texture where the scene can be rendered to. So instead of drawing the object to the screen like we normally would, it instead draws them into that texture. And then the game does some post-processing effects on that texture, which then it finally draws to the screen. And I've created a little outline effect here with just a simple little fragment shader, but I can do absolutely whatever I want with this. And this makes for some pretty awesome stuff. Here's a quick little example of that. So this is a Gaussian blur effect where the game blurs the off-screen texture using Gaussian weights. And as you can see, this means that all the edges are very blurry. If we combine that with the outline shader, then this is the result. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, drop a like down below to show your support. We're going to be exploring mesh simplification and how we can write our very own algorithm for this. So if you want to watch something like that, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Bye!